Hey guys, welcome back to some more AFK Arena. Today we're over on the YouTube and we are looking at the Stargazer priorities. Now before we get into the Stargazer, however, there is a very definite way to do this, guys. So if you are newer to AFK Arena, there's a point of the King's Tower when you will start farming Stargazer cards. Now with it being said, you want to get to the point of having the ability to get Stargazer cards. Now if you're a whale, go ahead and buy them. Um, if you're a heavy spender, again, go ahead and buy those Stargazer cards. Stargazing priorities very early can hurt your account if you're stargazing again very early within AFK Arena because it's going to start eating up all of your diamonds and it is very expensive and earlier game, it's a little bit more difficult to get the cards. So what I'm talking about is when you start getting, I believe it is one floor 125 that you do start getting these Stargazer Scrolls out of the Faction Towers. So if you haven't got to the point of unlocking the Faction Towers, if you haven't gotten to the point within all four towers of hitting at least the point to get those Stargazer Scrolls, it is not time to Stargaze at that point, guys. Now, once you do get the Stargazer open, there is an absolute definite priority to building heroes, which we're going to cover in the guide. So let's take a look at it. All right, guys, so here is our stargazing priority. Big shout out to Vixen, who is the mod over on the AFK Arena Reddit page, and also Basilo for putting together the visuals on this. Now you can see this is updated version 1.115552023. So this is the most relevant content that we have. Now, overall, guys, visual guides are super hard and super time intensive. Not only the research part that Vixen did, but also the visual stunning. Put it together. I love how this looks. Wanted to cover it. I'm going to put a link down below to the Reddit post so you can go over there and you can check it out for yourself. Make sure you bookmark the post so you know exactly where it is so you can reference it because again, these don't change that often. I'm going to run through here, kind of give you my rundown of the heroes. So number one, guys, being the twins. Now, the twins are one of the highest utility heroes within AFK Arena. Um, having them early is going to help you with the guild trials. Also, when you get to the Twisted Realm, um, the Cursed Realm, when you start unlocking different parts of AFK Arena, the twins are going to be the driving force to doing damage. Even if you murk a hero, chances are you are going to need at least one copy of the twins because their ability within AFK Arena is still super unique to what they do with the linking and the haste with the ultimate ability. It is amazing to see the hero still having this much utility. Second one we look at is Mahira. Get as soon as you unlock the Windbinder. Now the Windbinder is of course the class specific artifact for the mages. Um, when you get it, it will allow Mahira to work exceptionally well. Big thing with here, Mahira is even if you have one copy just at elite, the ultimate ability still works the same. Whether you have it just at Elite or you have her at Ascended with five stars, Mahira's ability is going to be the same with her Charm ability, um, which works incredibly well. Big thing when you get a little bit further is the survivability that we find with this hero. Then we get into Lucretia, guys. Lucretia is still a number one carry in AFK Arena, a damage dealer in a lot of different game modes, even still falls in some of the best in slot team comps, uh, not only within the campaign, but you can also see her in the Treasure Scramble even within the Curse Realm, the Nightmare Corridor, seeing a lot of utility. Now, the big thing with getting her to one star is that unlocks, of course, the engraving system that you want to build around. Now, she is a hero that the higher you build her, the better she is going to perform. I don't recommend taking her past that 30960, so plus 30 signature item, 9 of 9 furniture in the 60 engraving. You can take her up a little bit higher due to the stats, but overall, guys, with so many heroes within AFK Arena, um, it is really a, a big investment versus kind of the, the um, trade-off of other heroes and building out other heroes. Then we get into Alna. Alna, of course, in the Abyssal Expedition is huge. Within the Treasure Scramble is huge. So many different game modes. Alna is really legit to making a lot of comps work. When you look at the Awakened version of Belinda, when you look at Grez, when you look at Baden, um, she is really the driving force because she provides the immunity even as recently as we've seen with Rem, Alna Rem combination doing incredibly well. Now with Alna, you can see that she has ascended without the one star. Alna does need the nine of nine furniture to perform at any level, but she does not need engraving at all. Then we get into Mortis, guys. Mortis is one of the heroes that is in every single Curse Realm comp. He is in six of six bosses, which is absolutely amazing to see. Here you're getting him to Mythic. Now he is a hero. That is not super imperative to build out the engraving, nor is it imperative to build out um, the furniture for him. But the plus 20 signature item does make a really big difference, which is the reason why we're pushing him here right to Mythic, followed by the twins. 
So when you're going through AFK Arena and you start getting a little bit further, you will realize that Mortis and the Twins um, are starting to die out. So if your Twins are not surviving the full minute 30 of a battle, it is time to build them out a little bit higher, guys, because that is really the survivability when you can throw on the signature item, which of course adds a lot more stats, a lot more survivability to the Twins. That is really when you want to build them out a little bit further. Then we get into the original version of Aziz, which is awesome to see. If you don't have from the Challenger Sword, definitely getting a copy. I'm still seeing him in a lot of different formations, guys. Even though I believe he was the first Hypogen hero that we ever seen, I think Athalia and him were the very, very first two. So getting some basic builds. So overall, guys, looking at the top row of the priority, really Mahira, Alna are huge. The rest of them you'll build kind of here and there. Hopefully you can get some full copies when you're using some of your Elite Stones to really build them up a little bit further. Then you get into Vithiel and you get into Halos, guys. Two of the very, very strongest um, Celestial heroes that we do have. You can see both of them at one star. That is because they require furniture. They require engraving. They require signature items to do incredibly well. Now, Halos and Vithiel um, still have an incredible amount of utility in all different game modes. There's really not many comps that you cannot either put them in or they are the best in slot in, which is really cool to see. And then, of course, we have Kanisa and Rook. I am surprised that Kanisa and Rook and Vithiel are still making such an appearance, guys. But if you have those heroes built, they are really a game changer in formations. Um, if you're running with a, a couple heroes like Matria, um, Kanisa and Rook works incredibly well. Even if you're running in a Brutus comp, even if you're running with Vithiel, Kanisa and Rook wor will work incredibly well. Again, needing the engraving, needing the furniture for not only the energy disintegration, but also the crowd control piece that they add. Then we get into Kazard, guys. Kazard, of course, the plus 30 signature item on him. Only reason you got to build him up to Mythic, it actually gives a 60% duration extension to the crowd control, which of course runs perfectly with Mihira, with Leonardo da Vinci, um, also with Raku, a lot of other comps that are utilizing um, the Kazard. We're even seeing him run, run with some comps um, with Amelia Rem, um, because of course Amelia is going to provide the crowd control. He is going to extend the duration by another 60%, 60, 60 which is huge. And then we take Aziz all the way up to one star, guys. Building out, of course, with that one star to put some engraving on there. If you don't have from the Challenger store already, it is the point of building him out. Now, when you look at the right side, um, the situational heroes build one at a time. They serve you uh, different utilities and can be swapped around depending on your account. Now, one thing I want to remember when it comes to the Stargazer, guys, is pay attention to who you can merc and who you can merc on a regular basis. Um, looking at these heroes right here, Tarnos in Frampton. Tarnos is the treasure scramble. He is an absolute monster when it comes to the treasure scramble, when it comes to the Celestial Tower. But that is really the only places that we're seeing him utilized, which is kind of true with Frampton. Um, Frampton we do see in some of the Cursed Realm comps. But overall, when it comes to the treasure scramble, when it comes to the Hypogen Tower, we are seeing him util his utility um, up a little bit higher. Now, when it comes to Olgath, Olgath would only, and I only do recommend him, and I believe Vixen said something about this as well, um, I would only recommend building him if you have the fully built Awakened version of Matria, um, because he is going to have a huge dam damage amplification factor um, if you have her built. If you do not, I, I wouldn't recommend it. And even when you look at these heroes, guys, if you're newer to AFK Arena, I probably wouldn't build a majority of these because the chances are, as a newer player to AFK Arena, when you start going through the priority and you get to this point of building a situational hero, um, chances are they've probably fallen so far out of the meta at that point. But again, looking at your heroes, looking at the priority, if you're actually in a situation where these are the heroes that you're looking to build, um, a couple in here, like the original version of Taylene, has an incredible amount of utility but doesn't work in formations unless you have Orthos. Orthos is really the, the big driving formation with these two. And then Zafriel, as much as I love him and I do have him built, um, PVP a little bit, he's in some formations kind of here and there. So again, the situational piece. But looking at all of these, I would probably go with Frampton or I'd go with Tarnos um, to really build out. Again, if you're a newer player to AFK Arena, these heroes you will probably never build because by the six, eight, 12 months down the road, um, there's gonna be a lot more Celestials and Hypogens that are gonna drop, making these heroes a lot less when it comes to utility. 
Now, looking at the Challenger store priority, I love, again, the original version of Aziz. You want to build that out, guys. The ability to use Feeble Mind to cancel alts, also the ground burn to reduce the attack rating is huge within these formations. Followed by um, Merlin and Leonardo. I know they look very similar. Merlin, of course, damage mitigation, also healing, a lot of utility with this hero. Same with Leonardo. Leonardo provides crowd control, damage amplification, absolutely working well. And then you get into Aziz. And then we go into Mulan. You can see down here, Orthos, Zorath, and then, of course, the one-star Athelia. Now, personally, looking at the store priority, the only two that I would probably swap down here would be Orthos and Zorath. Um, again, it, it really is kind of a personal preference um, within there, just because I, I love the utility that I find with Zorath. I'm used in a lot of different formations. Orthos, of course, used with the original version of Taylene. But now Orthos is also being used with Matria. So we're actually seeing the Orthos Matria combination versus seeing the Orthos and the original version of Taylene. Um, but again, even if you built Orthos, guys, you're not going to have any love loss at all. But I love Zorath. I run Zorath in so many different combinations. Um, the Zorath like a combination is just devastating. And I also run Zorath within the Treasure Scramble, which again, the 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 reset that he does, but the damage that he puts out is incredible. And then, of course, the original version of Athelia, guys, um, would be the final one to build out of here. Situationally, um, a lot of players have the same abilities that the original version of Athelia has. When you look at, you know, Orin, um, when you look at a couple different heroes, the ability to go straight back line, even the Awakened version of Thane, um, works in a very similar manner to what we see with Athelia. And again, not a huge priority to build her out at this point. And then it's funny, he kind of puts the bottom feeders down here in the bottom right. So looking here, guys, there was kind of a, a time, um, once upon a time, um, short of the Celestials and the Hypogen Towers, you're really not going to build them. And even if you're at this point of AFK Arena and you don't have these heroes built, there is absolutely no reason to even start them. Um, when you look at Morio, when you look at um, Flora, even when you look at Audrey, Moriel and Audrey used to be, have an incredible amount of utility in a bunch of different modes. Since the power creep has continued within this game, they've kind of been backseated. The only thing they're used for now is really the Celestial Tower. And same with the bottom. The bottom row doesn't really see any utility at all, period. Um, because for a majority of the, the Hypogen Tower, you have Lucretia in one team, and then you have my hero with Kazard in the other team to really finish it out. Um, if you've gotten this far, you probably don't need a guide anymore looking at the bottom feeders. But these are also heroes like Flora and Wukong that you can max out to five stars eventually, um, which I do recommend if they are your last purchase. Um, go ahead and max them out because when you get additional copies, and AFK Arena does love to give us a lot of additional copies of them, you can actually swap them for other Celestials and Hypogens. I believe at this time I've used the swap in all the time playing um, three or four times on the account that we've actually swapped. I know I swapped one for a copy of the Thiel um, to put the one star on him. But overall, guys, when you start maxing him out, also once you do max a hero, a Celestial or Hypogen out to um, five stars, you will no longer pull them from stones. So those elite stones will no longer pull them. It will be replaced with another Celestials and Hypogen heroes. So all right, guys, so that'll do it for today's video. Again, big shout out to Vixen and Basilo for putting this guide together, guys. It is absolutely amazing. I'm hoping there's a lot more content coming from these guys because it is visually stunning. Again, I will put a link down below so you can check it out for yourself. Let me know in the comments what you guys think. And as always, thank you guys for watching.